All right, we're going to take a look at debugging in Visual Studio Code because this is a question that I get asked a lot. And Visual Studio Code is a um, free IDE from Microsoft. It's a text editor that supports huge numbers of plugins and can be configured to talk to just about anything. Um, now, the first tip, whether you're debugging or not, is that I recommend you install a plugin called Rust Analyzer. You don't um, have to use it to debug, but it can set, it can make setting up your debug sessions a lot easier. It also provides a whole lot of niceties like um, syntax highlighting. Whoop. Sorry, I was on Linux this morning. I keep using the wrong hotkey. Um, you'll notice that it. So, for example, look at my uh, mouse over a string here. It gives me the full documentation from uh, Rust. Up. Um, an answer to question Rust Analyzer actually ships as part of the Rust up setup. It works with everything from Emacs to, I believe, JetBrains use it. Um, I personally like having it expand the types in my display. I find that very handy. Um, and the other plugin you want is called Code LLDB. And this is available for almost every platform. and um, is a plugin that current, connects pretty much directly to the LLVM debugger. You can also use the Microsoft C++ plugin if you have to, for example, because that's all you've got installed. Uh, but Code LLDB gives you a much nicer experience, and a few things work in Code, code LLDB that don't work in C++, including uh, reading from the keyboard, uh, which you can make work, but it is a tremendous amount of pain. If you use uh, uh, control shift comma, which is truly one of the strangest, sorry, control plus comma, which is truly one of the strangest uh, shortcuts ever to open the settings, you want to search for the word everywhere and check allow setting breakpoints in any file. Um, otherwise, if you're using the Microsoft C++ system, uh, the IDE won't know where appropriate places to set a breakpoint is. And it will confuse you by not allowing you to set a breakpoint where you want one. All right, we're going to debug a quick program. This is very much beginner level, so if you um, have seen, if you know the answer here, uh, maybe not spoil it for everyone. So it's pretty simple. Front line. Hello, what's your name? Then we create a string buffer. Open standard input. And we read a line into the buffer from the keyboard. And we're using expect to uh, throw the message unable to read standard input in the unlikely event that it's not working. So if the buffer contains Herbert, we greet Herbert. Otherwise, we tell the unauthorized user to go away. So that looks like a pretty straightforward program. And that's probably not the output that everyone expected, because uh, Buffer apparently doesn't match Herbert, even though I carefully made sure that I had uppercase H, um, which would be uh, the most common error for that. So let's move on to setting a breakpoint. Um, set a breakpoint, you mouse over the, uh, uh, line, uh, the line just to the left of the line numbers. I've actually got one already set up here. And what a breakpoint tells you, says is when the um, when a breakpoint um, execute uh, sorry when uh, when the executing program hits the breakpoint line it will pause and allow you to investigate the state of the program that's running. Um, starting the debugger, um, this is one thing that is also not so obvious. You can just click the little debug icon on the left. But you'll get much better results if you open the command palette and use Rust Analyzer Debug. And the reason for that is that Rust Analyzer will actually go in and set up all of the profiles for you, and you won't, so you don't have to write giant JSON files yourself. And so let's go ahead and do that and see if we can find the bug. So we select Rust Analyzer Debug, and it says restart in my case because I've already uh, run this to make sure that it works. So I enter my name as Herbert, 
And okay, this looks like a regular IDE debugger. Um, over here, we have local variables showing a buffer, showing that we have a pointer of the standard M. If we had static or global variables, they appear here. If you're feeling particularly brave, you can dump the registers. Um, I very, very rarely need to do that. The watch panel allows you to um, add expressions to evaluate as you step through the program. Uh, the call stack shows you that, as usual, uh, Rust has actually generated four threads because I'm running on Windows, three of them to keep the uh, message queue happy. Uh, so let's look at the bug itself. So what is inside buffer? Well, massing over it is the easiest thing to do. And it expands the string out to show you each of the individual characters. And there's the bug. Um, standard in has captured um, standard n has captured the fact that you press enter at the end of Herbert, so you have a slash r and a slash n in there. And that would be the issue. The correct the, uh, way to fix this is to use the trim function to uh, remove excess characters from your string that aren't printable. Uh, the uh, Visual um, Studio Debugger is very powerful. Uh, you, I've used it on enormous projects. Um, I'm still very much a print line debugger just because I've been doing this a really long time. Uh, but I do, um, I do recommend uh, making sure that you have it available uh, should you need it. And like I said, we can fix this by adding the trim function. And just wanted to emphasize there are times that you shouldn't use a debugger. Um, if you're sharing a system, using a debugger can hit it pretty hard. If you're sharing something that's actually running with live data, debugging, launching a debugger will uh, pause the thread that you're debugging. Other threads will continue, and this can lead to some really unpredictable behavior. Uh, when you're working on a time-sensitive system, particularly a game, a debugger can cause you no end of pain. Um, if you have a lot of timing functions that expect to calculate the time since the last frame executed. Uh, for example, if uh, you're working on a physics system for a game and the game suddenly notices that a couple of minutes have occurred between frames, uh, that physics system is probably going to assume that everybody's movement continues in the same direction for two minutes and now your whole game isn't working. And so because of that, it's important to make sure you understand other options too. And when you're in a, something like a distributed or microservices environment, uh, the hardest part can often be figuring out where to attach the debugger if you've got um, a handful of different programs running. So you usually end up needing to combine these. I usually end up needing to uh, combine um, these techniques. Um, in answer to the question, just to Appeared. I am on Windows. Um, I regularly use Visual Studio Code on both Mac and Linux at work, and um, it works great with both Windows services for Linux and running a full Linux VM and using uh, the Remote Connect option. Mm -hmm.